Uh, so, Aaron, is there a hope here that maybe uh, this next phase of the bull, uh, the bear market, might be a little bit more tolerable, or uh, is the yield curve telling us that we're just getting started in this recession? You know, I think there's a lot of things to be optimistic about moving forward. Um, really, a lot of this comes down to the strength of the U.S. consumer. Um, you know, we just saw that retail sales number in October coming out above expectation. Um, and it really kind of amazes me if you look at it, you know, we're in the midst of inflation, the highest inflation that we've seen in 40 years. And U.S. consumers are still getting out there and spending, um, which is making up, you know, roughly 70 percent of GDP. Um, so I'm pretty optimistic on, on the state of the economy moving forward. So uh, should we ignore the history of the yield curve? I mean, this thing has got an impeccable record. Somehow it even pulled it off during COVID. You know, I, th I think it's very possible that we do go into a mild recession next year. Um, but if you look at it, we don't have a ton of excesses, you know, in business investment or in housing. Um, and if you look at going back to U.S. consumers, you know, they're looking at over a trillion dollars on their balance sheets more so than they had pre-pandemic. So, you know, I would argue it's possible that we do go into a recession. If we do, it's likely to be mild. And we're really probably in the best shape to deal with it that we've ever been. Um, looking at, you know, banks, for example, they are in much stronger financial footing than they were, you know, during the great financial crisis to deal with any kind of um, slowdowns in, in spending and that kind of thing. So that brings up a good point. Uh, how do we hedge for potential uh, economic slowdown, even if we do feel that optimism you're relaying here? Are there sectors, are there areas that should be ports in whatever storm does come, if it does? Yeah, I mean, two areas that I really like are uh, consumer staples. They've held up relatively well this year. Look at companies like Pepsi, up about 3% for the year, um, have, have been reporting pretty good earnings. And it's kind of remarkable because the majority of their revenue is coming from overseas. And with a strong dollar, you would think that would really bring um, that revenue down and those earnings down, but it hasn't, um, really because they have pricing power and they're able to rise those prices and, and consumers are paying them. Um, another area that we're really optimistic about moving forward is emerging markets. Um, if you look at it right now, you know, the dollar is falling. It fell underneath that 109 uh, big support level. And right now, EM currencies are at the lowest um, value relative to the dollar that they've been in 25 years. And history says that when those EM currencies start to gain, emerging markets absolutely crush the S&P. Um, and if you look what happened, say, in 2001 after the dot-com bubble, for the following 10 years, emerging markets outperformed 330% to 43% for U.S. stocks. Um, and they're really, really favorable valuations right now. So that's definitely mm. um, something that I would be looking at. So uh, dollar uh, downside part of that view, the greenback's going to keep softening up? Um, yeah, I think there's a good chance. And honestly, that would that would be a, a big benefit um, to the global economy at this point and inflation. Um, you know, talking about still a lot of concern in the market, investor uh, pessimism is still, um, you know, higher than average. And there's still pretty negative sentiment out there. So I, I think we still have a little ways to go, you know, talking mm -hmm. about what you were before with the big jump after the CPI print and then the market kind of going sideways since then. Uh, we definitely still have a ways to go. How does the potential for the EM and the international market to rally marry with your optimism over the U.S. economy? Because if, uh, I agree, there's a lot of pessimism right now. Uh, generally, uh, most people do follow that uh, implication of the bond market, thinking that there's a recession coming. So if there's not, if we remain solid, uh, would that not cause that dollar to go back up? I mean, are we in this kind of catch-22 where if things are better than expected, suddenly uh, we can't drop those rate hikes down to 25 maybe as fast? I mean, uh, how does that fit with the potential here for the economy doing better than maybe where the pessimism suggests? Well, um, you know, I think a good point here is with pessimism so high, it's a really, really low bar um, to hurdle. So, you know, things are better than expected. That doesn't mean that they're doing great, right? We're not seeing a tremendous amount of growth. Um, we're seeing a slowing economy that's better than expected and not falling off a cliff. Sure, okay. Um, but we are still seeing pretty slow growth. Okay, yeah, good distinction. Uh, so when we look at, uh, so for the uh, old 60-40 portfolio, is there a chance here that maybe we'll get some relief? Uh, will this next phase, uh, if we even do better, but we're still slowing, do people buy bonds again? I think so. I mean, yields are the most attractive they've been really in 15 years. Um, and if you're talking about folks that are retired that really are relying on income and not so much capital appreciation, um, I think that's yields and, and some of these bond prices are starting to look pretty attractive. 
Um, definitely for the long run, you know, you need that balance, you need that hedge against the downside protection. And if we're not in an area like this year, or like we were in 1969, um, where, um, you know, we really need that, that downside hedge and that protection against uh, uncertainty, which is bonds that hold up really well. Um, I definitely think that the 60-40 portfolio is, is still a good place to be moving forward. Okay, uh, Aaron, uh, thinking about uh, the uh, bond side of it, what about the, uh, the gold and the, have we lost uh, crypto and Bitcoin as the diversifier argument? Gold's done pretty well. I was looking at a chart today, since uh, CPI crossed through the Fed's 2% target, or since it bottomed in May last year, rather, gold's only down 7%, NASDAQ's down 14, Bitcoin's down 55, Bonds are down 30 percent. Uh, so does that mean gold's got a roll here? Uh, how does it compare with the bond part of the portfolio? You know, there's a lot of talk about gold and crypto as inflation hedges. I'm not really sure the data is there to back it up. Sure. Um, but I do think with the dollar falling, that's definitely going to benefit gold. Um, and one of the things in our portfolio that's really been one of the only outperformers this year has been commodities, obviously owning gold and precious metals in that basket. Um, so I'm definitely a fan of, uh, of commodities. Uh, moving forward in this environment for sure. Uh, crypto, you know, maybe not so much.